Hello again. So in this video, we're going to take another look at Pauling's rule number two, but instead of using quartz, as we did in an earlier example, we're going to look at the mineral pyrope, Mg3Al2Si3O12. So this is the mineral pyrope, and it is part of the garnet group the garnet family of minerals. So the difference here is that when we looked at silica, we just had one cation to concern ourselves with. Here we have a whole host of cations, and again, these are all bonded to oxygen. So how would Pauling's second rule, the idea of electrostatic valence bond strength, apply to garnet? Let's clear the chalkboard and rewrite the mineral formula again. So Mg3 Al2 Si3O12. And as we did with the quartz example in the other video, we need to figure out the coordination number for oxygen. We'll call it N. And for the case of magnesium, we know that it is 8. For aluminum, it is in sixfold coordination. And for silicon, it is in fourfold. So each magnesium is bonded to eight oxygens. Aluminum is, bond, aluminum is bonded to six oxygens and silicon to four each. So how can we determine N? Well, one of the ways we could do this is just separate the cations from the oxygens and then take a look at the number of atoms that are in each coordination state. So we have three atoms that are in eightfold coordination. So we could take eight times three. Then we will add to that the number of atoms that are in six-fold coordination multiplied by that coordination number, so six times two, plus we have three atoms in four-fold coordination, so we'll take four times three. And then that will be equal to this product here, uh, 12 times n. We have uh, a coordination number of n that we want to find out, and there are 12 atoms that are in that coordination state. So this is 24 plus 12 plus another 12, and that is equal to 12n. n is equal to 4. So that means we can cross that out here and put a Roman numeral 4. So oxygen, on average, should be coordinated to four different cations. So what does that mean from the electrostatic valence bond strength principle? Let's erase the chalkboard and draw an oxygen atom. And that oxygen atom is going to have one, two, three, four bonds emanating from it, uh, just as we had determined in that previous uh, slide. Now, what is it going to be bonded to? Well, we have magnesium that has to be involved somehow, and silicon and aluminum. But now we've run out of cations. These are all the cat different kinds of cations that are in pyrope. What would go over here? Well, it could be another one of these atoms, and to find which one is most likely or most common, we can use the electrostatic valence bond strength idea from Linus Pauling. So let's take a look at magnesium. Magnesium being in eightfold coordination and with a two plus charge, it's going to take the, that two plus charge and divide it amongst all eight of those bonds. And that means for each bond, it's only going to have a quarter charge that it can donate total for each bond. So for aluminum, same idea. It's in sixfold coordination, but it has a three plus charge. So three, uh, three plus charge divided six ways means there is only a half a positive charge per bond. And then silica, in fourfold coordination, it's got a four plus charge. Divide that amongst four bonds, and then each bond will get a plus one charge. So for silicon, we've got a plus one. Magnesium, each bond gets a quarter charge. And then for aluminum, each charge gets a plus one half. For the case of the oxygen atom, as usual, it has a two minus charge. So now we can take a look at what might fit over here. So we've got a plus one coming from the silicon, plus quarter from the magnesium, and a plus half from the aluminum. Those all sum to a little bit less than two. That's not; Those are not gonna completely satisfy um, this, this negative two on the oxygen. 
but what if we put a magnesium over here and we add a plus one quarter? Well, then all of a sudden, all four of these will now have a positive charge of plus two that now matches the negative charge on the anion. So in this case, we would say the magnesium is the most likely fellow to be put into this slot. Now, I, there are other kinds of atoms that could fit into the structure. So one of the neat ways of thinking about uh, Pauling's second rule is we might ask what other kinds of atoms uh, would work. Well, anything that has a two plus charge that is an eightfold coordination should be able to substitute on that site. So we could start playing games with thinking about other kinds of atoms that might fit based on a radius ratio analysis that we looked at in an earlier video, and then asking whether it would be stable in terms of the electrostatic valence bond strength, and whether or not the positive bonds that reach the anion completely match uh, the, the negative uh, charge on the anion. And when they do, that would be, in a Pauling's rule sense, the most stable state, the lowest energy state, and the one that would be then most likely. It doesn't mean that magnesium is the only option here, or that you can only put two plus cations there, but that they would be uh, predicted to be the most stable and uh, the lowest energy state.